Let's plunge headfirst into our topic of the day, dear viewers, readers, and fellow storytellers. We're about to embark on a deep dive into the shadowy world of villainy, specifically focusing on one antagonist from my series, Four Feasts Till Darkness. This tantalizingly twisted epic is my brainchild, and in it, I sought to construct a universe where light and dark are perpetually wrestling for supremacy. It's a place where calamitous occurrences push individuals beyond their societal comfort zones, laying bare the human condition in all its splendor and squalor. The series transports readers to Gidane, a realm pulsating with arcane energy and shrouded in mystery. It's an expansive vista of sweeping landscapes, ancient ruins, Lovecraftian horrors, and unseen dangers, a veritable sandbox for heroes and villains alike. Our protagonists, spearheaded by the indomitable Morrigan, grapple with primordial evils while working tirelessly to unravel their world's cryptic enigmas. Now let's shift gears to discuss villains, those indispensable malefactors that lend our tales their sharpness. No story is complete without its quota of wrongdoers. But remember this, sculpting a compelling villain isn't just about casting them in stark black or white. They require depth, they demand complexity, they need that flicker of humanity that elevates them beyond mere cardboard caricatures of evil. With this thought in mind, allow me to introduce you to an especially spine-chilling character from this series, the Dreamstalker. I recall some ARC readers expressing initial skepticism at another addition to an already expansive cast when this formidable adversary made her rather late debut in the narrative. However, she quickly left an indelible impression on both characters and readers alike. The Dreamstalker isn't your average antagonist. She prowls not only within reality, but also penetrates dreams. She wields many powers akin to the protagonist, and with more experience under her belt, holds an edge over Morrigan's psychic abilities, despite being ultimately overshadowed by the heroine's raw power. The lesson here is that skill often trumps raw strength. Power is meaningless without the ability to wield it effectively. The Dreamstalker's unique talent lies in her ability to exploit her victim's vulnerabilities, not through brute force or cunning alone, but by tormenting them through their own nightmares. It's a psychological horror show that blurs the boundaries between dreams and reality, adding an extra layer of terror to Morrigan and her team's quest. Her presence certainly raises the stakes. As our heroes scramble to save the world from obliteration, the Dreamstalker's relentless pursuit and insidious influence pose a formidable threat. She pushes our heroes to their limits as they wrestle with their inner demons. In my opinion, what makes the Dreamstalker and other villains like her so compelling is the twisted humanity at her core. Despite her supernatural powers, she retains vestiges of her human origins, which allow her to manipulate emotions and exploit weaknesses with bone-chilling efficiency. This distorted reflection of humanity adds depth to her character, blurring moral lines and challenging the hero's views on right and wrong. Indeed, in the third book of the series, we see how truly powerful she can be as she manipulates Morrigan's determinedness and honor for her benefit by exploiting Morrigan's heroic traits. Her unwavering commitment to doing what is right, the Dreamstalker contorts these noble qualities into tools for manipulation, leading Morrigan down a treacherous path of inadvertent betrayal and self-destruction. As our heroine grapples with the fallout from her actions, she learns a bitter truth. Even noble intentions can be warped by inner darkness. Villains like the Dreamstalker showcase the importance of crafting antagonists as more than just obstacles to overcome. When done right, they become mirrors that reflect our hero's strengths and flaws. Their inner battles test the limits of morality, and their complicated natures remind us that good and evil often go hand in hand. So take care when sculpting your villains. Give them shades of gray. Make them human, but still vile. And they will lift your story to new heights, or plunge it to even greater depths of despair.